Hey YouTube, in this video, we're gonna talk about time series forecast using machine learning and Python. Time series forecasting is a very common problem that you face as a data scientist where you have historic data and you wanna predict into the future. In this video, we are specifically gonna be using a machine learning algorithm called XGBoost. And depending who you asked, Bojan, many believe XGBoost is one of the best out of box machine learning models to use on tabular data and even time series problems like this. What's even better, we're gonna be working completely in a Kaggle notebook, so you can just click the copy button on the top of it and if you have a Kaggle account you can edit the same code that we're working with today and explore it yourself. My name is Rob. I make videos about data science, machine learning, and coding in Python. If you enjoy this video please consider liking and subscribing. It really encourages me to keep on making videos like this in the future. Okay let's get into the code. So a little background on the data set that we're going to be using for this tutorial and we're going to be using an hourly energy consumption data set that I actually uploaded to Kaggle a while ago. It's been very popular and what it has is energy consumptions for different regions in a portion of the country. And we have those values at an hourly basis for over 10 years. So here we are in a Kaggle notebook and if I look over on the right side, I can show you that we have this hourly energy consumption data set imported that we'll be using a little bit later. But let's get started by doing some imports. So we're gonna import pandas as pd, import uh, numpy as np, import matplotlib, pyplot as plt, and let's also import seaborn as sns. And then for our modeling, we're gonna import xg boost as XGB. This is gonna be the model that we use for our forecasting. Now, before we even get into the data, we need to talk about how there are different types of time series data. Now, if we had data, time series data that was just completely random, there'd be no point in modeling at all, but there can also be other trends in our data that we wanna account for. There can be um, exponential growth, something like you might see in the stock market, uh, increasing or de decreasing linear trend, seasonal patterns, and also there can be a combination of any of these. So uh, seasonal patterns with growth. The type of data that we're gonna be looking at today, we will see is mainly seasonal. Now, sometimes people refer to this as the time series being stationary or non-stationary. But for more, most time series, it won't actually fall into exactly one bucket. And this XGBoost model that we're gonna use works pretty well with changes to the data over time, but you're gonna have to account for this depending on what your data set looks like. Now let's go ahead and read in this data set by using pandas read CSV. We're gonna open up the hourly energy consumption and we're gonna read PJM East hourly and call this df for data frame. If we quickly run just a head command on this, we can see the first few rows. And we see that we have, going back to 2002, the hourly energy consumption value. And if I run a tail command on it, I can see it goes all the way up to 2018. With pandas, it's pretty common to set our index to be the date time column, since that will be consistent in this time series data set. And let's go ahead and save that off. And then it'll be, it's a good idea to actually visualize it. So let's make this a plot uh, with a style of dots instead of a line. Let's give it a figure size. Let's also pull the color palette from Seaborn so we can use that when we're plotting and put this up here by our imports. And we will just make the color the first color in this color palette. We could put this up here and maybe give it a title. PJM East Energy Use in Megawatts. And we can show it. Now, another thing I'm noticing is it looks like this data frame index is just an object type. So we might want to cast this as a date time by running pandas to date time on the index. 
And now our, our index D type is actually a date time 64 type, which is uh, much better for this case. Instead of just having this be a string, we'll do this when we load in our data. And now if we plot it, the X axis looks a little bit easier to read because it's formatted as a date time instead of a string value. I'm just gonna go ahead here and split these lines to make it a little easier to read. And then we're gonna go into the train test split. Now, if you're really building a model that you're gonna productionize, there are some ways to do full cross validation in a time series data set. We're not gonna go into that in detail in this video, but I do have another video about cross validation that you should check out. But here, just for learning sake, we are going to take our data and we are gonna split on the date January 2015 and have everything prior to January 2015th be our training data and keep our test data as the following dates. So we can make, uh, we can do that pretty easily by taking the index and finding where it's less than uh, January 1st, 2015, locating those rows in our data set and then calling this train. And similarly, we'll call this test if it's greater than or equal to those dates. Just to visualize this, I'm gonna actually plot both of these in the same plot by making a matplotlib subplot. We're gonna plot train and we're gonna plot test. And we'll add labels to each. So the first one is training set and the second one is test set. And we'll do plot.show. The colors are going to be different. And we can see here that we have split here, January 2015. Actually, let's just make a line there too. We'll make a line there on that date with the color being black and the style line style being dashed lines. And I'm gonna add in a legend so this name actually looks correct. Let's add this title here that I'll call this train test split. Beautiful. Now another thing we might wanna look at while we're exploring this data is just to get an idea of what one single week of data looks like. Let's take January 1st, uh, 2010 and up until January 8th, 2010. This should just be one week of data. And let's go ahead and plot this. So we can notice a few things here. It looks like within each day, there are two different peaks. This is pretty common in energy consumption. And there are also valleys during the nights. It also looks like you have a weekend effect here where one of these days, actually January 1st would even be a holiday, will be affected by that day either being a weekday or a weekend. So that brings us to our next step, which is feature creation. And we're gonna create some features with this data using the time series index. Luckily, Pandas makes this very easy for us. So if we take the just the index, we see here we have a list of all the dates, but we can actually use the dot hour on this, and we'll get a number value for each of these dates, which is just the hour component. So we're gonna go ahead and add this as a new column in our data set called hour. We're gonna do the same thing for the day of week by doing df index dot day of week. Now these values will start, I think, as a Monday, but we can always look these up in the documentation. You see that day of week here, Monday is a zero and Sunday is a six. We can pull out the quarter, which will be splitting the year into four different groups. And then of course the month, we can do the year. We can even do the day of year. So let's go ahead and add these in as features. And just to clean this up, we are going to make this into a function called create features that will take in a data frame and return the data frame with the features added. Let's also give it a quick doc string that says create time series 
features based on time series index. And we'll run this function on our data frame. Now let's go ahead and visualize our feature to target relationship. Now one of the ways we can visualize our feature versus our target is by using Seaborn's box plots. Box plots are nice because they get you a, give you an idea of the distribution of the data set. So we're gonna give it the data of this data frame. Our X variable is gonna be the hour and our Y variable is gonna be PJM East megawatt. And let's give this a bigger fig size and go give it a title, megawatts by hour. So we can see here that early in the morning, there seems to be a dip in energy use and it tends to get higher later in the evening. Now we can do the same thing with month. Let's give it a different color palette. And there we can see that the megawatt uses by month tends to peak here two times in the winter season. Then in the fall and spring, it has lower and another peak in the middle of summer when everyone's running their AC units. Okay, now that we've created features and we know our target and we have some idea of the relationship between the two, we are gonna create our model. We're gonna create our model based on the training data and evaluate it on the test data set. So let's actually import a metric. I forgot to do this earlier, but from, from sklearn metrics, we're gonna import mean mean squared error as our metric. Mean squared error will give us more penalty for any predictions that's way off versus just a little bit off. But the type of metric you might wanna use for your data set will really depend on what you're looking to do. Now this is a regression task. So we're gonna create a regression model using XGBoost's regressor, XGB regressor. Now there are a lot of things that you can tune in XGBoost, but we're gonna start with the number of estimators. That's basically just how many trees this boosted tree algorithm will create. We're gonna set that to a thousand, and then we're gonna go ahead and fit this on our training set. But before we do, we need to take our training and test data set and run them through the create features function. I'm gonna add DF copy here to create features. That'll make sure that we're actually editing a copy of our data frame when we run it through here. It'll get rid of that error. And then let's also define our features, which are all of the columns that we created, time series features, and our target, which is this PJM East megawatts. Now we're going to actually make a features data set from our training data set and call it Xtrain. And that's just going to be all of the features from our training data set. We're also going to make a Y train, which is our target. And that's just going to be the target column from our data set. And we're going to do the same thing with our test. Now we can feed this through our model. So we'll give this, our fit method takes X train and Y train, and we're actually gonna give it evaluation set, which is going to be both our X train and X test Y test. We're gonna have the model training stop early if, it, if the test set does not improve after 50 trees, and we're gonna make this verbose. So actually it's saying that we need to put the early stopping rounds here when we create the model itself. Now, as we train here, we can see that the root mean squared error as trees are being added to the model on the training set begin to go down. And also the root mean square error value on the test sets or validation set starts to go down. But then the validation set starts to get worse and this is overfitting and that's what we would like to avoid. Early stopping will stop our model training once it sees this occur since we've given it an evaluation set. 
But the, also another thing we can do is lower our learning rate to make sure that it doesn't overfit too quickly. Let's try this again. And when we actually provide it this verbose, we can tell it, give it a number instead of true. That'll tell us just to print out the training and validation score every 100 trees that are built. Now what you can see here, it stopped after 436 trees. That's because our test or validation set started to actually get worse after that many trees were built. Now, one of the nice things about our model now that it's trained with XGBoost, we can check out the feature importances. And we do that by just running feature importances off of the regressor that we've created. And that'll give us the importance values based on how much these features were used in each of the trees built by the XGBoost model. But these values by themselves aren't very helpful. So let's make a pandas data frame where the data is these features importances and our index is the feature names. Let's also call the columns is importance and call this data frame FI for short. We can sort the values by importance and plot as a horizontal bar plot with the title of feature importance. Put this up here. And now we can see that the model has really been using the hour feature and the month feature, the day of week and day of year feature less. And then year is down here at the bottom. There's some overlap in these types of features. If we removed month, uh, day of year would just be used in its place. So keep in mind that when you have highly correlated features, this feature importance functionality really will not tell you exactly how important each feature is individually, more so as a collective in this complete model. There are other, there are other packages out there for exploring feature importances more, but this gives us a good idea of what our model is using. All right, now we're gonna forecast on the test set with our trained model. We can do this simply with just taking our regressor and doing predict on our X test set. And we're provided a NumPy array of all the predictions for the test set. Let's take our test data and make a new column called prediction where we will store these predictions. Then because I would like to see these next to all of the training data, let's merge this on the test set. Let's do uh, how equals left and let's do left index is true and right index is true to say that we'll merge these two data frames on the index columns. And we don't wanna copy over all the features, so we're just gonna take this prediction column and merge it over. Now in our main data set that we first started with, we now have a prediction column for our test set. And if we plot PJM East and plot our prediction. Now we can plot our raw data and predictions. Let's give this a legend. So putting this all together, we can see our predictions plotted on top of the training data set. And similar to what we did before, let's try to take a look at this one week of predictions but we're gonna to have to do 2018 because that's in the test set. So what I've done here is I'm plotting the predictions and the ground truth over one week. And you can see that the model isn't perfect. There's a lot of improvement that can be made. Um, some ideas include doing better parameter tuning. We did not tune this model at all. We could also add in features for specific days of the year like holidays that might carry forward to either increase or decrease the energy use that it would predict for those days. There's a lot that can be done to make this better, but you could see that our predictions on the test set in this week do actually follow the trend that you would expect to see um, going up and down, having the dips during the, the night times 
And we can even run our evaluation metric on this by using our test predictions. Well, let's do mean squared error, which takes first the true value and then the prediction. So that would be our test PJM East megawatt and then our prediction. Now I'm actually going to run the square root of the mean squared error. This will get us the root mean squared error, which is the same metric that we were using here, RMSC, when we we're evaluating the model as it trained. So our root mean squared error on the test set is 3,714. 3, to improve this model, we would want to reduce that score. So I'm gonna print this here, and we're gonna print out the score with, let's do four decimal po points. There, two decimal points looks pretty good. Another thing we can do is just calculate the error. So let's take our test data set and our target value and subtract our predictions, prediction. And then let's take the absolute value of this so that the negative and positive don't matter, but it'll just give us a general error value for each of our predictions. And let's look at the worst and best predicted days. So what I'm gonna do here in the test set is take the index and then take the date so that each date's gonna have its own value and make that a new column. And if we group by date, take our error and the mean value, this will give us the average error for each day that we've predicted. And then if we just sort values, all right, if I do ascending equals false, and then we take the head of the five, then we can see that the worst predicted days all seem to be in the middle of August of 2016. And if I do the opposite way with ascending equals true, we can see that some of the best predictions were made in 2016 as well. So by calculating error, we can then see which dates we actually predict for the worst and try to improve those going forward. Now, in terms of next steps, that you would wanna do if you were actually running this yourselves would be to create a more robust cross-validation to add more features. If you could get them from external sources like maybe the weather forecast or holidays and add those in as features to the model and see how it improves things. Thanks so much for watching this quick tutorial on how to use machine learning for time series forecasting. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. That way you'll get alerted every time I create a new video. Let me know in the comments if you have any feedback or things you'd like me to see make videos about in the future. See you next time.